Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my 2020 challenges. I know you guys are all super excited. I'm super excited. I've been so looking forward to doing this video. So yes, I have one, hold on, one, two, well not really, one, two, three, four, 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 I can count, four, five challenges that I will be participating in in 2020. All of these except for one are personal challenges and one of them is also going to be one that I'm putting out to you guys that just like last year the stacking the series challenge is coming back in 2020 and the other ones I am more than encouraging you guys to participate in with me if you want to kind of do your own thing take what I'm gonna talk about and put spins on it oh yeah another challenge of course is um, is a Instagram challenge so we're a little all over the map here you guys but all of these are mostly personal challenges. They're not group challenges. I'm not participating in Romanceopoly in 2020. I really did enjoy it in 2019. The issue is, is that there's a lot of um, genres that I generally don't read. And I would much, I think I said in another video, 2020 is going to be the year of the series. I really want to work through my series books. I want to work through my backlist. And what I found with challenges like the Romanceopoly, as much fun as it was, and, you know, I'm not discounting it. Go check it out. You guys need to see it. I was watching some of the announcement videos, and it looks like it's going to be so much fun this year, you guys. They have really put a lot of thought into this, and I think it looks fantastic. But it's just not for me. Because I found last year I started a bunch of series that I didn't necessarily, you know, like I could have been working on backlist books of my own. So that's my choice, and we're going to go with that. So we're going to start off with, I think, by the one that most people are super excited about, and that is the Stacking the Series Challenge. So yes, I am participating and hosting again the Stacking the Series for 2020. I don't have it up just yet. Give me a couple days before the new year. Right, Give me till like around Christmas time and another week or so, and I will have that up in the Goodreads group. Actually, as I'm recording or as I'm... When I edit this, it'll it'll be a reminder to me to go and open that thread in the Goodreads group. So go and check it out. Um, I Last year, I think I overwhelmed myself and I ended up dropping the challenge in August. Um, I think I went with like 11 tiers. I'm only doing eight this year, which does not sound like a huge difference, but it is. So the way the Stacking the Series Challenge works, if you're new to my channel, is essentially as it sounds. Pick the number of tiers that you want to participate. It can be, and I ask that it be more than three. So like if it's three, four, five, what have you, mine is going to be eight. So for tier number one, you're going to read one book from that series. For tier number two, you're going to pick a different series and you're going to read two books from that series. Tier three, three books from another series, four, five, and so on. As you go up and you're building essentially a upside down pyramid. Um, it's, it's a good um, visual to look at. Um, but yeah, so I picked eight this year, which, you know, 11 minus eight is not that big a difference. But when you're going now, you know, I'm reading eight books of one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. When I had the 11, I was reading 11, 10, nine. So that now adds 11 plus 10 plus nine, 19, 21 books, I think, to my original challenge from last year. So my math is probably way off, so I do apologize. So eight tiers will give me 36 books which is three books a month. Absolutely doable. I can totally do that, no problem. So I'm gonna let you guys know what series they are that I am going to be reading. I'm just gonna pop a little picture up here of some of the books, like one of the books in each of the series, just so you can, guys can kind of get a visual. So my, uh, I'm gonna start at the bottom with my single tier, which is going to be The Fallen Brothers. Um, I can't remember the name of the first book, I'll pop it up here. The Perfect Shot or The Long Shot or something like that, I think it was called. I read the second book last year, so this is only a duology. So I'm going to read the first book, and I can count that series as done. Always super exciting. Oh, and side note, getting these, picking these tiers does not have to complete a series. If you want to start a brand new series, and that series has five books, and you want to pick three of them to read next year, that's perfectly acceptable, however you guys want to work it. You know, this, as you guys know, with me and my challenges, I, I am fast and loose with, you know, rules. <laughs> Go ahead and do what you want. Um, for my second tier, I'm going to be reading the Whiskies and Whiskey and Wedding series. Again, I think I read the third book last year. So I will read books one and two and get that series off my plate as well. I'm sorry, I didn't write down who the author of all these series are. I do apologize. Um, series number three is the Rocky Mountain Rider series. I believe, I believe... 
This is either Sarah Richardson or June Favor. I cannot remember who the author is, but I will pop up a picture of the book and we will see if I'm right on either account. <laughs> I should have written that down. I'm so bad at this, you guys. But anyway, I'll be reading three books from that series. Number four is the Texas Rodeo series. Again, I think that one might be June Favor, but don't quote me. Um, but yeah, another Cowboy Texas kind of series. Very much looking forward to it. That'll be my four book series. My five book series is the London Celebrity Series. So typically what I try and do with these is I pick series I've already started. But I made a comment when I did my anticipated reads for January um, a couple weeks ago that the fifth book in this series is coming out in January and it's a holiday themed book. So I made notations by three of these series that each one of them will end like the last book I have to read through next year will end in a holiday themed book to read in December. So I am going to be reading through the first four books in the London Celebrity series over the course of 2020 and end in December with that holiday book. I am super excited. I know people have raved about this series. Lucy Parker, I think is the author and I cannot wait to get into it. I own the first couple, I think. And yeah, I think this is going to be absolutely fabulous and it's going to be so much fun. Um, next up, some Rayanne Thane for uh, my sixth tier, the Haven Point series. I have only read the first book and the 10th book. <laughs> I have a bit of a gap in between to fill in. So I'll be reading books two through seven in this series. And I am very much looking forward to it. Rayanne Thane is a favorite of mine. You guys know this. It's going to be fabulous. Um, category or tier number seven is the Chatsfield series. And this is actually a Harlequin Presents series which is not like typical for me. I read book eight last year, enjoyed it. I'm gonna go back and read the first seven books in the series. So these all take place kind of like in a hotel, like a, like the Hilton, like a family owned hotel empire kind of an idea. So, you know, exotic locations, wealthy people, very soap opera. These are shorter books. They generally come in right around, if not less than 200 pages, should be great. And my eighth tier is I'm gonna be reading a full series from start to finish. And it's going to be a nonfiction series, you guys. Isn't that awesome? And I'm taking a cue from Shannon over at Shannon Riddler. I know she doesn't have her channel up anymore, but she has a blog now. And I will leave a link to her blog in the description box below. And she read through this series last year, and I'm going to do it this year. And that is um, the Llewellyn's Sabbath series. So these are eight books, one following each of the eight pagan Sabbaths. Um, you know, Yule and Halloween and um, Candlemas, Ostara, you know, there's eight of them. I do have physical copies of these. I didn't think to grab them before I sat down to record you guys, so I do apologize. But my plan is to read them the month of that Sabbath. So I am very much looking forward to these ones. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. So that is the Stacking the Series Challenge for 2020. Um, the next challenge I will be participating in, of course, is the Triple RC Monthly Challenge. The Romance Readers Reading Group on Goodreads. This will be year number five for me for doing this. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but in case I didn't, I am actually hosting the month of March. I am so super excited. I sent an email because they were, they put a call out looking for people to host. I put my, you know, I sent them a, a little message on Goodreads. I'm like, hey, I've been participating for like four years. I love this challenge. It's one of my favorites. If you're looking for hosts, she came back. She's like, yes, please. Um, so I'm doing March and I cannot wait. I think it's going to be so, so fun. I will of course mention it again when I'm doing my TBR for March to say, Hey, if you guys want to participate, I'm hosting it this month and I may or may not be hosting it later on at the end of the year. She said she might ask me again if they need more people. And I'm like, please do. So super excited. Like I said, this will be my fifth year doing this challenge and I have not missed a month ever. So super excited. Um, next up. This one I am very excited about. Um, as you guys know, if you followed me in 2019, I did the Harlequin, the 40 Years of Harlequin project because I celebrated my 40th birthday back in March of 2019. And <clears throat> I wanted to do something else with the Harlequin imprints. So about eight months ago, I guess, when you used to buy uh, eBooks from the Harlequin website, directly from the Harlequin website, you could download them and then upload them to like your Kindle or whatever tablet it was that you read on. And I have a lot. I have purchased a lot of eBooks from the Harlequin website. We're looking at probably close to 200, you guys. Now, a lot of them I haven't gotten to because like I said, for a while I wasn't reading them for whatever reason. 
And then when I decided to start doing that, then they changed and they gave you this. Now, instead of being able to download them, you have an app and it's called Bookshout. It's taken me a little bit of time to get used to because I really like reading on my Kindle. But I've kind of navigated. I have my Kindle, but I also have my tablet. So I've been reading on my tablet because you can download it either for Android or for iPhone or your whatever. What is it? Apple? I don't know. I don't have one of those things. But just as a screenshot to show you guys, I have a ton, ton of books sitting here unread. No joke, you guys. Like, literally, I'm still scrolling. Like, up. <laughs> there we go. I, I think, I think for sure, I have well over 200 books. So what I am doing is, I actually, uh, on Goodreads, if you go on my Goodreads, there is a folder that is called Owned Bookshout. And all the books that are on here that have not been read yet are in that folder. So every month or every so many days, I think I'm going to go with um, four books a month. I'm going to pick four books that I have not read yet and just literally do a random number generator and pick four unread books from my Bookshout, um, you know, app and read them. So there you go. So if you guys have Bookshout as well and you buy eBooks from the Harlequin website and you want to participate in this with me, you know, why not? Let's do it. Um, also, um, this video originally was supposed to go up on Thursday, but I changed my mind and this is going up on Tuesday. On Thursday will be my Harlequin anticipated reads because I'll be talking about this. So I am still asking you guys to pick me a book, a Harlequin novel in, um, January and all throughout the month uh, or uh, all throughout 2020 every month in 2020, cause I'll read four books from here and one brand new release that comes out each month. And that one, I also encourage you guys to read along with me if you're so interested. So yeah. So there is my next challenge. I'm calling it my Harlequin Book Shout Challenge. Um, next up, this one I'm also excited about. Now, originally this was going to be, excuse me while I reach, a 2020 TBR bingo. And the more I started thinking about it, the more, I will be honest, guys, the more difficult it seemed. It honestly seemed like a lot more work than it was worth. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I know I had a couple people comment that they were super intrigued when I mentioned it, you know, the series bingo, but I'm just like, I, I just can't figure out a good way to do it that would still allow me to read through series in 2020. So instead I created my TBR series jar. So I bought this jar at the dollar store, super adorable. And literally all I did was take pieces of paper and on each piece of paper, guys, I'm not opening these because they are all washi tape together. Um, I wrote a series that I am currently working my way through and I wrote it on there and I covered it in washi tape so they wouldn't pop open. And every month I'm going to pick, how many did I decide? Five, five a month. There are 60 in here, 60 series that I hope to read the next book in series in 2020. So essentially what I'm going to do is when I do my TBR videos every month is I'm going to on camera, pull these out and pick the five, show you guys what they are, stop the camera, go and find out what the next book in series is, come back and let you guys know what it is. So that's essentially what I'm doing. So if you guys are interested in, you know, copying this idea, please do, because I think this is, this is going to be super fun and it'll be really, really fun to work my way through all of these in 2020. So the goal at the end of the year is to have an empty, an empty container, and then I can maybe refill it in 2021 and do it again. So yeah, so super fun. Very straightforward, very simple. Like I said, the, the, uh, the series bingo just started to get a lot, lot convoluted. The more I looked into it and all this, and I just thought, this is just so much easier. An adorable little jar with washi tape with little penguins on it. Because who doesn't love penguins? <laughs> but yeah, so that's my 2020 series bingo. Um, or series TBR jar, excuse me. And the last one that I want to talk about, this is actually, I found this challenge on Instagram, on Bookstagram. And I don't have written down, I'm sorry, the three, the women who are hosting the challenge. Wait a minute. Maybe I do have it written down somewhere on here. Bear with me just a second, you guys. Um, let me go back, back. I have everything organized on my Google Drive. So hopefully I do have it here. Um, yes, I do. So this is the 20 backlist in 2020 challenge on Bookstagram. You do not have to be on Instagram to do this. This is this would be a super fun challenge just to pick your own books to do this for. This is hosted by, and I'll leave um, their um, their Twitter handles or Twitter their Instagram handles in the description box below. By it's Jalem Reads, 
Reading and Sunshine and Cassidy's Bookshelf are hosting this. And essentially, very straightforward, pick 20 books that you want to read from your backlist in 2020. So what I did was I combed my bookshelves and I picked physical books. That was my caveat for this one. All the books had to be physical books that I bought in 2019 with the intention of reading in 2019 and that didn't happen. So now we're going to read them in 2020. So I thought I would go through them real quick and show you guys what they are. So bear with, sorry. So here's one stack. <laughs> There's more over here beside me, but I thought I'd grab these ones first. So I'm not going to get into what all of these books are about because there are 20 of them here, but I will leave a list of them in the description box below if you guys want to go ahead and check them out for yourself. But these are all books. So essentially the way this is going to work, I think it's most months I'm going to be reading two of these. Um, but in January, February, what did I write down here? October and December, I'm only going to read one book. Um, so mostly two, but some months only one. First off, The Season by Sarah McLean. Bet you a lot of you haven't heard of this book. <laughs> I happened upon this book on Instagram and I had to hunt down a copy of this. This is Sarah McLean's very first book, I believe. And it's a YA historical romance. I was sold the second I heard about it. I hunted this out and I bought a copy and I still haven't read it. So this is definitely getting read next year and I cannot wait. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. Next up, speaking of historicals, I've got my like, little stack of historicals here for some reason. Devil's Daughter by Lisa Kleypas. Bought this one last year. Haven't read it yet. Beautiful step back on that. Oh, love it. I love just a good mass market paperback historical. This one looks great. Uh, sorry, I'm just putting the books down beside me. Bought this one used when I was in Boston with Steve. Um, actually, he purchased this for me, so thank you, Steve. Wild in Love by Eloisa James. This is, I believe, the first book in the Wilds of Landown, Lindown Castle series. Obviously, I haven't touched this one yet. Yes, it is a used, but I don't care. Broken Spine, it's all good. Someone else read and loved this before me. This one should be fantastic. Bought this one at Walmart, I think. Or did I buy it used? No, I bought this one used at Value Village. Nothing But Trouble by Amy Andrews. A good cowboy romance. This one will be fantastic. Cannot wait. I cannot believe I haven't gotten to this one yet. Um, this one was given to me by Steve. Um, it was a, a, an advanced reader's copy. Um, he read it, enjoyed it, and passed it on to me. And now I am looking forward to reading it. Rebel by the great Beverly Jenkins. Uh, advanced reader's copy right there. This one should be fantastic. This one came out last June. Yeah, I should have gotten to this one way sooner than I did. But, or that I'm going to, but I will get to it and I will read it and I will love it. Um, next up, The Great Jill Shalvis. This one, spoiler alert, is the one that's going to get read in December because it's the only Christmas book in this entire set that I have. And this is Hot Winter Nights by Jill Shalvis, a Heartbreaker Bay novel. This one actually comes before the book I am currently reading right now, which is um, Wrapped Up in You, which is the newest Christmas book. This was last year's Christmas book. Very much looking forward to it. Looks like it takes place at a ski lodge. It's going to be fantastic. And it's Jill Shalvis. So my other caveat for this, like I said, all the books have to be physical and I have to read them in this format. I'm not allowed to pick up the audiobook. I'm not allowed to pick up the ebook. Got to read them in physical format because I don't read enough physical books and I need to read more. I really do love my digital reading, mostly my ebooks. I find them so much easier. But yeah, these ones will all be read in physical format. Next up. Slow Dancing at Sunrise by Joe McNally. Don't know why I haven't picked up this one yet either. Mad at that. I love this author. It's a contemporary romance. It'll be read next year. Can't wait. Um, now let's get into some of the more, the um, <coughs> floppy trade paperbacks. Excuse me for reaching. First up, I don't know. I think I might have bought this one when I was in Boston. Or not in Boston, but when I was traveling to the U.S. No Kissing Under the Boardwalk by, by Kate Angel. Now, in October, I read the um, on the corner of Pumpkin and Vine, and Kate Angel was one of the authors, and I didn't love her story. So I'm a little bit apprehensive about this one, but I will give it a shot. It's not very long at all. Um, comes in, what, 260 pages? Relatively bigger print. Should be good. I, you know, it is what it is. I'm actually looking forward to it. I mean, I picked it up with the sole fact of reading it. I will get to it. Next up, the book that everybody on in, on Bookstagram was talking about last year or in 2019 that I still haven't read yet. 
Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. I am so looking forward to this one. It looks like a nice floppy trade paperback. It's going to be great. This is an older book that I've actually had on my shelf for a little while. But I pulled it out a couple times last year to read it and I never did. And I'm a little disappointed so I'm definitely going to get to it next year. Is Sisters of the Sorry by Brenda L. Baker. Looks really good. Um... Yeah, it says uh, something, uh, a captivating tale of one woman's quest to improve the life of another and discovering herself along the way. And this is a debut by the author. So I don't know much about this book. I bought it based on the cover. I do want to get to it next year. I bought this book used. I have a copy on ebook as well. And I cannot believe I still haven't gotten to this one. This was a booktube darling or a bookstagram darling a couple years ago. Good luck with that by Kristen Higgins. The one about um, a group of friends who meet when they're younger at fat camp and how one of the friends passes away and how the other two deal with it. I, everybody raved about this book and I am so looking forward to it. I will definitely be picking it up next year. A couple more here, you guys. Again, how have I not picked this up already? California Girls by Susan Mallory. Bought it last year at the Walmart. Still haven't read it yet. Cannot wait. It was one of my anticipated reads. Another one that was an anticipated read. Essentially, I think the most of the rest of these are all anticipated reads. One Summer in Paris by Sarah Morgan. <laughs> she is an absolute favorite author of mine. How have I not read this yet? I cannot wait. It's going to be so, so good. Jennifer Ryan. She writes some great cowboy romance, if you guys are interested. But this is her first, like, to use a turn of phrase, women's fiction, which is not a favorite phrase of mine. But anyway, The Me I Used to Be. Again, I bought this one at Walmart when it was on sale when it first came out. Looks super good. I've heard a lot of people rave about it. I need to read this one. Um, last couple here, you guys. Jude Devereaux's As You Wish. I believe this is part of the series I just read. I cannot remember. But yeah, beautiful deckled edges. I actually bought this book used at the thrift store. Gorgeous cover. This is going to be a really fun read. The View from Alameda Island by Robin Carr. Her newest novel, It's a Standalone, takes place in San Francisco. Yep, definitely next year for sure. This one, Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors by Sonolia Dev. How have I not read this one either? <laughs> I look at all of these and I'm like, how have I not picked you up yet? But yes, this one definitely next year. And the last three here, you guys, sorry for leaning off camera. Um, we have a brand new book that just came out. So I will, I will give myself leniency with this one because it literally just came out like a month ago. Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Very much looking forward to this one. I know a lot of people said this was a really great book and I cannot wait to pick it up. I grabbed it at Walmart for 40% off. So this one should be fantastic. The Great Ran thing, you guys. Hit myself in the face. The Cliff House. Yes. Definitely next year. Cannot wait. And last but not least, a book that I don't know if a lot of people are, are talking about or a lot of people did talk about. I at first thought, oh, I'll save this one for nonfiction November, but it's not a nonfiction novel. It's a historical fiction novel based on true events. And it's The Quintland Sisters by Shelley Wood. This is, for those of you who are unfamiliar with some Canadian history, this would be world history, but it was Canadian history, about a series of quintuplets, uh, identical quintuplets, that were born in northern Ontario in 1934 and how they were actually taken from their parents and like put in a zoo in a way like they were put on display and the Canadian government and the Ontario government and the doctor and all of them made a lot of money off these girls and I think three of them are still alive so yeah um, it's a story that fascinates me I've been to the Dion Quintuplet Museum Back, uh, up in, I think it's Calendar, um, which is near Sudbury, I believe. But yeah, but this one I'm very much looking forward to reading. I immediately went out and bought it when I saw it was coming out, and I'm very much looking forward to getting to it. I think it's going to be fantastic. So anyway, guys, that is all that I have for you in this video. That is it for challenges. Sorry, I'm just kind of stacking books here in front of me. Um, but yeah, that's that. those are all the challenges that I am personally participating in in 2020. Um, it's, you know, it's going to be a lot of reading. It's going to be a great reading year. I said in my goals video last week that I really, really want to do, 
I would like my reading from new releases to backlist to be closer to 50%. Um, right now at the tail end of 2019, we are looking at closer to like a probably 60-40 split. So we're getting there. You know, if a few months I have that one is higher than the other, that's fine. But overall, if I look back at the end of the year, I'd like more of a 50-50 split. New releases are fantastic. I absolutely love them and I would never be grudging, you know, and be upset about the fact that publishers want to send me these books to read. But there are so many great backlist books as well that I haven't gotten to yet and I need to. So that is my definite end of all challenge to myself in 2020. But anyway, longer video. Sorry, you guys, I yapped on a little bit in this one. But please let me know in the comments below if you're going to participate in any of these challenges as well. Do you want to uh, do your own series TBR jar? I think that would be a lot of fun. Are you going to participate in the stacking the series with the rest of us? Um, you know, definitely let me know. And I'm kind of trying to leave this a little bit open too to maybe participate in some more readathons. So we shall see. Anyway, guys, that is all that I have for this video. Until my next one, take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.